Hello friends, welcome to IAM Exploration. In this video, you will learn about empagliflozin, also known as Jardians. We will go over the mechanism of action, indications, side effects, dose range, and much more about Jardians. If you are looking for a specific piece of information, make sure to check out the chapters section of the video. And that's me. My name is KK. I'm a board certified internal medicine physician. Let's dive in. Starting with the mechanism of action. Jardians is an SGLT2 inhibitor. Sodium glucose co-transporter 2 is a predominant transporter responsible for reabsorption of glucose from the glomerular filtrate back into the circulation. Jardians reduces renal reabsorption of filtered glucose. It also lowers the renal threshold for glucose and increases urinary glucose excretion. Jardians reduces sodium reabsorption and increases the delivery of sodium to the distal tubule. This may influence physiological functions such as lowering both preload and afterload of the heart and downregulating sympathetic activity. Moving on to the indications. Jardians is indicated to reduce the risk of cardiovascular death and heart failure hospitalization in patients with heart failure. It is also used to reduce the risk of cardiovascular death in adults with type 2 diabetes mellitus and established cardiovascular disease. Jardians can also be used as an adjunct to diet and exercise to improve glycemic control in patients with type 2 diabetes mellitus. Please note the limitations of use. Jardians is not recommended for patients with type 1 diabetes mellitus. It increases the risk of ketoacidosis. It is not recommended to improve glycemic control in adults with type 2 diabetes mellitus and EGFR less than 30. It is also not recommended for heart failure patients with EGFR less than 20. Moving on to the dosing and administration. Jardians is available as tablets in the dose of 10 mg and 25 mg. Prior to initiation, make sure to assess the renal function and check renal functions periodically thereafter. Volume depletion should be corrected if present. Jardians is recommended at a dose of 10 mg once daily in the morning. For additional glycemic control, dose can be increased to 25 mg once daily. Jardians can be taken with or without food. Moving on to the contraindications. Jardians is contraindicated in patients who are hypersensitive to Jardians or its excipients. Reactions like angioedema have occurred in clinical trials. It is also contraindicated in patients who are on dialysis. Let's discuss some warnings and precautions. First warning to keep in mind is ketoacidosis. This is a class effect with all SGLT2 inhibitors. Fatal cases of ketoacidosis have been reported. Ketoacidosis can be seen in both type 1 and type 2 diabetes mellitus. In clinical trials, risk was higher in patients with type 1 diabetes mellitus. Jardians is particularly known to cause euglycemic ketoacidosis. This happens even if blood glucose levels are less than 250 mg per deciliter. If ketoacidosis is suspected, discontinue Jardians and treat promptly. Before initiating therapy, consider risk factors for ketoacidosis in all patients. Some of these risk factors may include pancreatic insulin deficiency, calorie restriction, which can happen from prolonged fasting, acute illness, or post-surgery. Alcohol abuse also increases the risk of ketoacidosis. For patients undergoing scheduled surgery, consider temporarily discontinuing Jardians for at least three days prior to surgery. Moving on to the next warning related to volume depletion. Jardians can cause intravascular volume depletion. This may lead to symptomatic hypotension, increase in creatinine, acute kidney injury, and in severe cases, it can lead to dialysis. Always assess volume status before initiating Jardians. Patients at high risk of volume depletion are geriatric patients, patients with underlying renal impairment, and patients on loop diuretics. Another important warning to remember is urosepsis and pyelonephritis. In clinical trials, serious urosepsis and pyelonephritis have been reported. Monitor patients for signs and symptoms and treat promptly. Next, risk of hypoglycemia. Risk is high when Jardians is used in combination with insulin or sulfonylureas. Lower the dose of insulin or insulin secretagogues when used in combination. A rare but life-threatening complication associated with Jardians is necrotizing fasciitis or Fournier's gangrene. It has been reported in diabetic patients using SGLT2 inhibitors. This condition requires immediate treatment with antibiotics and surgical consultation. Necrotizing fasciitis should be considered in patients taking Jardians when they present with pain, tenderness, edema, or swelling in the genital or perineal area associated with fever and malaise. Moving on to the risk of genital mycotic infections. Jardians increases the risk of genital mycotic infections. In post-marketing experience, 
hypersensitivity reactions have also been noted with Jardian's use. Let's dive into clinical trials experience as it relates to warnings and precautions. Urinary tract infection as an adverse reaction was more common in patients taking Jardian's compared to placebo. The incidence is highlighted on this slide. Rate of discontinuation due to UTI was 0.1% in the placebo group, 0.2% for Jardian's 10 mg, and 0.1% for patients taking Jardian's 25 mg. Incidence of UTI was higher in female patients. This slide highlights the risk of genital mycotic infections in male and female patients. Genital mycotic infections like vaginal infection, vulvovaginal candidiasis, and vaginosis was seen in 0.9% of placebo patients, 4.1% of patients taking Jardian's 10 mg, and 3.7% for patients taking Jardian's 25 mg. Discontinuation from the study due to genital infection occurred in 0% of placebo patients and 0.2% for patients taking Jardian's. Phimosis was seen more commonly in male patients treated with Jardian's compared to placebo. Volume depletion as an adverse event was reported in 3.4% of patients taking Jardian's 10 mg and 3.2% of patients taking 25 mg of Jardian's. Empagliflozin causes osmotic diuresis which leads to volume contraction and volume depletion. Volume depletion may cause decreased blood pressure leading to hypotension or orthostatic hypotension. If severe, it can lead to syncope. In clinical trials, volume depletion was seen in 0.3% of placebo patients, 0.5% of patients on Jardian's 10 mg, and 0.3% of patients on 25 mg of Jardian's. The risk of dyslipidemia was also slightly higher in patients taking empagliflozin. This table highlights the risk of severe hypoglycemia in patients taking Jardian's. As you can see, the risk of severe hypoglycemia in clinical trials was comparable to placebo. The risk of hypoglycemia increases when Jardian's is combined with metformin or sulfonylurea. With Jardian's, increase in serum creatinine and decrease in EGFR can be seen within weeks and thereafter these changes stabilize. In long-term cardiovascular outcomes trial, increase in serum creatinine did not exceed 0.1 mg per deciliter and a decrease in GFR did not exceed 9 at week 4. These laboratory changes reversed after discontinuation of therapy. A dose-related increase in LDLC was observed in 2.3% placebo patients, 4.6% increase was noted in Jardian's 10 mg group, and a 6.5% increase was noted in patients taking Jardian's 25 mg. A mild increase in hematocrit was also observed. Urine glucose excretion can lead to positive urine glucose test, something to keep in mind. Moving on to drug-drug interactions. When used with diuretics, Jardian's increases the risk of volume depletion as we discussed before. When used in combination with insulin and sulfonylurea, there is a high risk of hypoglycemia. Jardian's does not inactivate or inhibit CYP450 isoforms. It is unlikely to cause interaction with drugs that are PGP substrates. There was no clinically relevant effect noted on the pharmacokinetic of multiple class of medications like metformin, gliburide, warfarin, digoxin, oral contraceptives, etc. Moving on to the risks associated with pregnancy and lactation. There is insufficient and limited data of Jardian's use in pregnant women. It is not recommended during second and third trimester. Empagliflozin is also not recommended while breastfeeding. Let's discuss use in geriatric population. A diminished glycemic control efficacy was noted in elderly patients with renal impairment. There was also a higher risk of volume depletion. Risk of UTI is also high. Effects of renal function on dosing. Jardian's glucose-lowering benefit decreases with reduced renal function. Risk of volume depletion and UTI increases with worsening renal function. With eGFR less than 30, use for glycemic control in patients without cardiovascular disease or CV risk factors is not recommended. Heart failure studies enrolled patients with eGFR equal to or more than 20. No dose adjustment is needed in these patients. Empagliflozin may be used in patients with hepatic impairment. Let's briefly discuss pharmacodynamic and pharmacokinetic properties of Jardian's. Urine glucose excretion increased immediately following a single dose of Jardian's. Urine glucose excretion was maintained at end of 4-week treatment period. Average glucose excretion was 64 grams per day with 10 mg dose and 78 grams per day with 25 mg dose. In a 5-day study, mean 24-hour urine volume increase from baseline was 341 milliliters on day 1 and 135 milliliters on day 5 with Jardian's 25 mg once daily. No increase in corrected QT interval was observed. Peak concentration reached in 
1.5 hour post dose. Effect of food was not clinically relevant. Terminal elimination half life is 2.4 hours. Age, body mass index, gender, and race do not have any clinically meaningful effect on the pharmacokinetics of Jardians. This brings us to the end of our discussion on empagliflozin. At IM Exploration, we are building something worthwhile. Make sure to give us a like and subscribe to our channel for more actionable insights. Until next time, we wish you all the happiness and success. Keep learning and keep growing.